Welcome back to Rocket City. Year one is in the books, and we're on to year two. Program tradition staring me in the face, D+. We kind of slogged along to a 3-9 and nine record last year, but it was just enough to get us to the FBS. I know that's not super realistic, but I'm here to have fun. Oh my goodness, they believed in me enough to give me a contract extension. They just must love the culture. Oh, they signed me until 2019. Coaching carousel stage, LSU's new head coach, Sonny Dykes from SMU. Bill O'Brien, the new head coach at Kentucky. So Billy Napier does not go to Florida in this one. He goes to Arizona. I guess before we move on to any other stage, I need to show you the season stats, not only for us, but the rest of the country. Rock the Dwayne Johnson with significantly more passing attempts, ended up getting the most passing yards over Anthony Burke. Burks, but we all know Anthony Burks was the star of the show. Far and away, the highest QB rating. Cliff Battle was a nice surprise in the middle of the season too. We really needed that boost from him. And with new quarterbacks coming in, I don't know how much we would see him again besides if there's injuries. But we'll keep him around. And Danny Dorito was so horrid. I think it might be time to switch into another position. We did play him at wide receiver a few times, so maybe we'll look into that. Leader in rushing yards, Samuel Wusu. Especially when we used him a lot as the read option quarterback. Really the only way we could move the ball in some of those games. Elijah Davis was serviceable, but he did the best he could with literally the worst offensive line the universe has ever seen. Samuel Wusu also leading us in receiving yards. 720. That's pretty good with some of the worst quarterbacks I've ever seen. Nuts and Kirkin as well. He kind of went above production more than I expected from him. You know what's embarrassing when a Wusu has more pancakes than the entire offensive line combined. Even Cal got one and Danny Dorito. These guys are not offensive linemen. What the hell? I'm so glad I'm replacing every single one of you. Jason Hudgens led the team in tackles with 62. TFLs, it was Noah Pounder and Amari Jackson. No one had five sacks this season, but we had a couple guys get four. O'Shea Jackson, Amari Jackson, and Corey Jackson. We are just filled with Jacksons. Interception leader Jason Hudgens. And kind of as an emergency kicker this season, Samuel Wusu was serviceable. 7 of 8, 87%, and a long of 38. Average yards per punt was 40. It's all that punting and soccer that got him there. He downed 12 punts inside the 20 this season, and a long of 70. I really hoped we would have been able to return a kick this season, but it just never happened. He got close, though, several times. His longest one, 51 yards. I tried to set all of our records extremely low so we could surpass them and have like an ongoing history of what actually happened year to year. It turns out our team was so garbage year one that we did not even accomplish the simple ones. No one on our team got over seven passing touchdowns. Burks got six, but then he got hurt. The receiving ones, Awusu did not get more than five receiving touchdowns, so he actually does not own that one. It's up for grabs this season. Surely he's gonna have a much better quarterback though. Amari Jackson still holds the three sacks in a game. All these records have yet to be broken. The rushing yards in the game might be tough for a while. And the rushing touchdowns. Wusu dominated in that game. Jake Hayner led the country in passing yards this year with nearly 4,000. And Kenny Pickett down there with 3,300. Shadrick Bird led the nation in rushing yards. Receiving leaders? Kean Williams, I think is how you say his name. David Bell, leader in receiving touchdowns. Sack leader this year is Jafari Harvey. Interception leader Cedric Boswell out of Miami of Ohio. And that's interesting. So the best punter in real life, Matt Areza, is actually the best field goal kicker as well in this. He also had the best punt net yardage as well. Jason Hudgens led the country in total kick return yards, mainly because we gave up so many freaking touchdowns he had the most returns out of anybody. So it's a little bit skewed. Interesting, so we actually got ourselves a new defensive coordinator. The old guy they just let go. Yeah, he seems to be similar. Got the pass rushing, and he's got some coverage as well. This is always the saddest part of these dynasties. It's when players start leaving. We had a large group of seniors this year. I'm telling you, it's actually an absurd amount of seniors. Maybe a third of our entire team. Anthony Burks, easily at the top. His breakout game was the most heroic thing I have ever seen. And after we went down and broke his leg, that was the most tragic thing I've ever seen. But we saw something special with Anthony Burks. It'd be a shame for his career to end there. I don't think there's NFL football in his future. However, as a coach, there's potential. This man's awareness was even going up when he was injured. This man was still studying tape. He loves the game. He wants to be around it. His awareness only landed at 59. But hey, I see the potential in this kid. That's why I offered him the offensive coordinator job with Rocket City. Surely he can turn around one of the worst offenses in the country. Rock Johnson's story was up and down, that's for sure. Very injury prone, but there at the end, he made a statement in that final game. Getting the win for Anthony Burks, getting the win for the city. Then Elijah Davis, poor guy, 
really never got a chance to show what he could really do. Our offensive line was so bad. So, so bad. Keyshawn Hicks, you were solid. I love me some fullbacks on this channel. For year one, you weren't too shabby. A lot of these receivers didn't get a lot of action. JJ Thompson, he had a couple of big plays, but he was kind of buried in the depth chart and quarterback play wasn't too great. I almost guarantee you he's going to be working at an Enterprise rent a car though. No football in his future. Tony Swole never got a receiving touchdown. Probably would have had plenty if he would have freaking caught the ball. Looking at his biceps too much. He's got his gym. He's got his workout classes. I think Tony will be all right. And Jack Nitro. Boy, oh boy, the 43 catching. How did you ever survive out there? He was pretty good though. One of our faster players. And Ganker. He's another senior that came in for like two seconds and then got hurt again. Noah Pounder though. Love the name. The game was solid as well. Four sacks. Tied for the team lead. 13 TFLs. One pass deflection. And how could we forget about Philip Pants? Another amazing name. For your year one guy, he did okay. And then Leighton James, he got so close to getting a pick six. He was our four string corner. And Cook Speed, a guy I forgot existed until right now. So looking at some other players leaving, it's interesting to see who decided to declare and who decided to go back to school. Like if we look at the quarterbacks, Kenny Pickett, he's projected to go to the first round, but Matt Corral is deciding to stay. Same thing with Carson Strong and Sam Howell. It's interesting because next year, it seems like there's gonna be a lot of quarterbacks that might jump ahead of them, but we'll see what actually happens and the goat bailey zappy going in the fifth round what the we got ourselves a 75 overall corner wanting to come to us and then two strong safeties look we were garbage at recruiting corners this year but t denson out of nowhere i'll gladly accept are you kidding me you better believe you're welcome here at rocket city the recruiting stage as you can see we still have loads of guys on the board that we want to target so what i'm gonna do is prioritize the guys that i think would be major major impacts on our team right away but think about what we could get in T-Dog Terrell Hughes. The 90 elusiveness, 90 speed, the catching. I could see a Heisman ceiling with T-Dog. So I think I'm going to be a mad lad. Full 10K at Terrell Hughes. And then everything else, it's up to the RNG. We are slapping down a tremendous NIL deal for him. Oh my God, we got him. Oh, and Colt Smith goes to UAB. He was the one that I was comparing to Daniel Sanders. I guess nobody's Daniel Sanders, right? Man, losing a lot of other guys as well. But we do get Josh Merrill, JR Cotton, a center. Wow, so Adam Maddox didn't sign anywhere. That's interesting to me. Who knows what his future is going to look like? Is he even playing? We do get Jacob Harrison, the number three kicker. I didn't put any points his way. I guess everyone just started ignoring him. Welcome to Huntsville, Jacob. We started at the 126th recruiting class, and now we're at number 65. Ended up with 14 three stars. It seems like there's a lot of random guys scattered throughout here that I didn't recruit specifically, but they ended up committing anyway. So they must be walk-ons and like not on scholarship. Never kept this guy on the board long at all, but Clinton Charles. I scouted him once and he decided to commit to us. 80 throw power, 72 accuracy. Not very mobile, but hey, we got some more depth at the quarterback position. Position changes is my favorite. So I'm going to start with players that I'm going to move around from our base team because I think they're going to be replaced by a lot of different incoming players. We already established Danny Dorito was the worst quarterback to ever exist. So we're going to try him out somewhere else. He looks like he's a better wide receiver, running back. We'll move you to wide receiver. See if you can make a name for yourself over there. New fullback edition. Love to see that. So for Cal, his throw accuracy is so low, I don't think we're ever going to be able to develop it. And we need to replace the fullback eventually. He was playing special teams for us, actually, so he does have some blocking ability. He's going to be a backup fullback and largely be a special teams guy. So Desmond Rose was a not great wide receiver. It's already gotten pretty crowded at wide receiver. So I'm going to move him to cornerback because we need some depth over there, even though he is dropping in like 12 overall. Jeff Eaton. I really do like that name. He's got some great speed for the quarterback position. Solid arm, too, with some good accuracy. It'll be nice to have a guy who can actually complete passes. Terrell Hughes could play quarterback, but I don't think I want that from him. Jeff is a better thrower. It says his primary position is wide receiver, but I'm telling you, his ceiling at running back is ridiculous. We also got Carlos Willis, who could play quarterback. Could be a pretty solid running back, but Terrell is going to be taking that reign. We do need help at corner, so let's move him over there. Over at wide receiver, we got our ourselves somebody we could develop into freaking cooper cup 90 route running as a freshman 81 spec catch 78 catch in traffic 80 release does need to work on catching but that's something that you can develop in season in addition to that we have two 
speedster wide receivers. J.R. Cotton, 89 route running as well. I love my route runners. You see that a lot with my guys. He has terrible catching, so he might struggle for a little bit, but he does have that top end speed at 93. And then Josh Merrill, 95 speed. He also stinks at catching. So it's going to take a while to develop him, but he's also 6'7". His athletic profile is fantastic, but we'll see if he can ever become a legit player. Our receiving core is one of our most talented position groups. I have high hopes for these guys over these next four years. Same thing with the tight ends, man. The incredible talent in Lonnie Clayton. I don't want to put too much pressure on Lonnie, but this guy could become the best tight end in my series histories. The guy behind him, Jesse Gaines, if he's given enough time to develop, this guy could be pretty damn good as well. Don't you worry, though. I'm not forgetting about Nuts and Kirkin. So we were unable to completely replace our offensive line, but we are replacing four of the five starters. Of course, we're going to start with our first ever recruit, Daryl Owen. I'm pretty confident this guy has NFL potential. Incredibly strong, incredibly quick for his size. The other tackle spot, we got another 6'7", 329 pound beast, Jermaine Smith. He should be pretty good too. If you remember Eric Adams, he is the only remaining guy who will be starting from season one. Moved him over to left guard though. Then we got that center, Luther Nicholson. He looks solid. Then we got Joe Cox. He's kind of just a band-aid for a while, but he's already better than the other players we had there. The pass rushing is going to be interesting because I didn't really recruit these two freshmen that we got. They are better than the guys we had before, but they aren't like major improvements. But I tell you what, the defensive line is going to be nasty. Doug Mayfield, he's going to be a stud. And I'm going to pair him with the thick boy, AJ Ford, who is slowly developing, but I got high hopes for him. And then I still can't believe we picked up William Newton. With such a well-balanced player like him, I'm so excited to be able to use him every single down because he can rush the passer, he can stop the run, and he can cover a little bit. Still got Sorensen and Veggie Smith at middle linebacker, and at right outside linebacker, rushing the passer, of course, is going to be Amari Jackson. Over the years of my dynasties, I haven't gotten a lot of transfers, and especially not many good ones. But T. Denson, he's going to change that. He even got 77 catching too. Can he play a little bit of offense? And signing Jacob Harrison was very close. 78 kick power, good enough, but the 95 kick accuracy, that is perfect. And then on to my favorite stage of all of this, training results. There's a lot of things to love about College Football Revamped. One thing I really appreciate is all the extra tools they have to make the gameplay even better. Like for this one, it's a player progression module. It makes player progression more dynamic. What you're going to see here is there's potential for guys to go up, even up to like plus seven overall. And there's guys that could even downgrade. So even the guys that look good on paper that we recruited could end up being busts or some guys that were like kind of scrubs at first could develop into some pretty good players. But I'm intrigued. I have not done this yet. I'm seeing it for the first time as you guys are. So let's see it happen. Samuel Owusu got plus four. That transfer cornerback we got actually went down my Minus three. Maybe that's why Kansas State didn't want him. Some of the other transfers as well. Roy Kent went down. Jason Hudgens moves up though. Plus 10 awareness. AJ Ford plus five. Hell yeah, man. We can see who got the biggest boost though. Skylar Grant, Santana Saunders, Danny Dorito at his new position at wide receiver, getting plus four. And that's a man who wants to make the team better. Don't know if we gave him really much of a choice though. He was garbage at a quarterback. Cliff Battle though, minus 27 overall. What happened here? This man was a walk-on. He was hopeful at first, but now he gets any sort of action and he just kind of quits minus 11 throw accuracy so his value it is garbage now cliff battle his days might be done got a bunch of 99 overall players will anderson kyron williams came back to school matt corral going back paid dividends he's now 98 overall not so much for Carson Strong, though, only 92. That's got to be one of my favorite things they've added so far in all of college football revamped. And we can see it switched over. Plus five trucking. And stiff arm. Oh, he's going to be very athletic now. Route running is getting better. Plus eight. You love to see that. Jumping is almost maxed out. It's only a sophomore, too. He's going to be elite. Plus 10 catching traffic. Are you mad? That is nuts. So we had to sign another walk-on because we were limited at the quarterback position. This guy's honestly a little bit better than him. 61 throw power, 57 accuracy. There's not much of a difference between them. He slacked off too much. Get him out of here. On the outside, you might think we looked pretty garbage last year, but we did just well enough, including beating Coastal Carolina. The Sun Belt took notice and they wanted to invite us into their conference. And we already played three of the teams last year, excited to play the rest of the teams. We do not have a 12th team, so there will be no conference championship if we were good enough to make it to that anyway, which I highly doubt, but we'll see what happens. Here's our schedule going into season two. We got Alabama to start it out, and then we have our other rivals, FCS Southeast, who we dominated last season, so this is more of a tune-up game 
just to make us feel good about ourselves. And then we got FCS Northwest. I want to make it our mission, now that we're in the FBS, to dominate these guys. Then we get into conference play. We play Troy, Coastal Carolina, South Alabama, Georgia State, Louisiana, Texas State, Louisiana Monroe. And then our final two games, we travel to Nashville to take on Vandy. We're going to try to decide who really is the worst FBS team in college football. To end the year, we've got Appalachian State. But if you made it to this point in the video, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. You're all legends in my book, and as for me, I'm Drew Morris, big old Drewski, not the expert. And I'll see you guys in season two. Peace.